Camera settings for the Air 2S have changed yet again. So quick video today on what's changed, what all the various settings do, and a workaround for that missing auto exposure lock. Hello, I'm Ian and I play with drones. And look, last week the DJI Fly app was updated to handle a bumper update of functionality for the Mavic 3. And as often happens, other models piggyback on the back of that and get an update too, and the Air 2S is no exception. Now, I did a video the other day on the Mini 2 update, which covers a lot of the same stuff, but I know many of you only watch videos that are specific to your own particular model. So this is a quick video for the Air 2S and the Air 2, and as I said, I'll cover the exposure lock issue as well, which some of you have been asking about. So first off, look, you want to make sure that you are on the latest firmware and also that you're running the latest version of the Fly app. DJI released version 1.5.8 for both iOS and Android, then promptly released 1.5.9 for Android a day later, although the release notes stated it was just a couple of very minor bug fixes and the main changes were uh, unchanged. So for iOS, you should find the app automatically prompts you to update, whilst Android may or may not prompt you. So you may need to head to the DJI.com downloads page and download the latest version of the app yourself and manually update. And you may need to allow installation from an unauthorized source in order for it to run on your device if it's not one that is officially supported by DJI. Either way, you can check both the app version and the firmware version by tapping the three dots once you've got the, power, uh, the drone powered up and uh, the remote connected. Tap the three dots top right, then scroll across to About. Then down to the app version, and you can see what app version you're running there. You can also then click the blue link to check for updates. And after a few seconds, it should come back telling you to update the firmware, or if you're already up to date, it will tell you that you are all up to date. So once you've made sure you're all updated, we get the drone up in the air and we can take a look at all the new camera settings. Remember you've got two sets of settings, one for video and another set for stills, which you can swap between by tapping the button above the shutter button on the right. So here we are in stills mode, and you can see down in the bottom right icon that we are in auto exposure mode, where the little camera icon has got the word auto. And none of the layout has actually changed in auto mode, but a few of you have mentioned losing the exposure lock setting in auto, and it's true, it's gone. But I do have a handy little workaround, and I will go through that after explaining some of the other pro camera settings. So. In auto, as I said, you've just got a few settings, the storage information and the format that you want the photo stored in, whether it's JPEG uh, or JPEG and RAW. On the left, you've got the storage information showing how much space you have got, uh, both on the uh, SD card and on the internal memory. And then, of course, you've got the EV, or exposure value. Look, this is a really handy little tool to adjust how bright or dark you want the overall photo while staying in auto mode. It can be useful if you're flying with bright sky along the top of your picture that it overwhelms the picture, making the rest of the picture look very dark. So you can adjust the brightness by scrolling the EV value right or left, and you can see how the picture gets darker or lighter as you scroll from plus to minus. So the big changes, as I said, in the layout are actually when you're in pro camera mode. Now, these were only changed late last year, but there were quite a few complaints about the sliders being too hard to adjust as they were so close to the lower edge of the screen. So, so now if you tap the little camera icon bottom right, you can change into uh, manual pro mode, and this is where you set all of the values manually for the camera. So you can see here, I've been playing around with the manual settings at a brighter time of day. So when I adjust the shutter speed or the ISO, you get to see the picture get either brighter or darker, but either way, you're adjusting it to closer to how it should actually be. And along the bottom, you have the MM or manual metering display, which is a really, really useful indicator to show you how close your manual settings are to correctly exposing the picture. Manual metering is not a setting that you can adjust. It's purely an indicator, as you can see here. When the picture is too dark, you get a negative value, and then as you make the adjustments and get the picture looking brighter, so it gets closer to zero and even above zero if you're overexposing the subject. 
Now let's hop over to the other group of settings where you've got the white balance uh, color sensitivity on the top, along with the storage and the video settings. Now I did more on playing around with the white balance in a video I did in Pro Mode uh, a few months ago. I'll put a little link up there. The white balance setting adjusts how sensitive the camera's sensor is to different color or warmth of light. Lighting color or warmth is measured in degrees Kelvin and generally low K values are warmer, more yellowy light, whilst higher K values or Kelvin values uh, have a cooler or bluer light. However, the way DJI have implemented the settings, uh, they actually adjust how sensitive the sensor is to warm or cold light. So if you push the value down, the sensor is expecting a warmer light and is adjusting things to compensate, leaving you with a cooler picture. Conversely, if you set a higher K value, then the sensor is expecting a cooler, uh, bluer light and adjusts to compensate, giving you a much warmer, uh, more orange picture. Messing around with the K value is actually a quick way to brighten a very gloomy landscape on a, on a cloudy, dull day. It's also a great way to make sunrises and sunsets look uh, even more spectacular. So of course you can do that sort of adjustment uh, by editing things afterwards, but adjusting the white balance uh, on the actual drone itself is a very quick and fun way to get some really, really good results. As you can see here when I filmed this lovely little sunrise a few days ago. Anyway, below that, as mentioned, you have got the file type for saving your pictures, either JPEG only or JPEG plus raw. Below that is the picture format, either 3 to 2 or 16.9, uh, 16 to 9 widescreen. And whilst it's true, I happen to leave this in 16.9, uh, 16 to 9 widescreen. This mode is simply cropping the top and the bottom of the picture, so it can easily be argued you should actually keep it in full screen and crop afterwards. But for me, I do like the speed and the ease of getting everything out in widescreen uh, to, to start off with. So it's very much your choice. And of course, below that you have got the storage info with a micro SD card as I said on the left and the internal uh, eight gigs of storage on the right. So that is it for stills. And to be honest, it is actually a very similar uh, picture for video mode where you will have very much the same settings, but with their own stored set of values. And as before, it's actually when you head into manual pro mode that you see all of the changes in the layout. You have the ISO and shutter speed on the right group of settings and along with the manual metering indicator as well. And as with stills, you can adjust the ISO and the shutter speed to exactly what you want using the manual metering indicator to gauge just how close to perfection you are. You'll also see that both the ISO and the shutter speed have got an auto button and you could very well ask yourself, why have an auto setting in manual mode? But this is actually really useful, as it lets you fix one value whilst allowing other values to still auto set themselves. Um, it usually makes good sense, for instance, to keep the ISO uh, down to 100 or 200 to keep things nice and sharp and free of, uh, of noise. So you can set the ISO manually here and then tap auto for the shutter speed for it to work out exactly what the right exposure is for you. And of course, the auto buttons are useful as a workaround for the exposure lock that was removed from the full automatic mode. Uh, so why? Why was exposure lock so useful? Well, look, it, was a, it was a simple way to fix the exposure or brightness of the picture in auto mode, where you had a situation where, for instance, the picture was being, uh, it was either too bright or too dark because of uh, maybe a very bright sky along the, the top. As I pan up, the bright sky comes into play along the top and the whole picture adjusts accordingly and goes dark to compensate because of the very bright sky. Now, many people only ever stay in full automatic mode. They just don't like messing around with the manual settings. And that's where exposure lock was really useful as it kept things very simple. But its biggest issue was that you had no way of prioritizing shutter speed over changing the ISO. And that's why to me, the workaround is actually a, an improvement making use of the individual auto buttons in manual pro mode. So look, with this clip, you can see going uh, dark uh, along the ground in auto mode. We can sort this out by making sure the camera is pointing to where we want it to and then tap lower right to flip into manual pro mode. You can tap the auto on both values and let the camera work out the best exposure. Then take both options out of auto mode to fix them back at manual. They will simply stay 
in the place that they are. Now, as they're gonna be staying at the same value, you have in effect locked the exposure exactly as you want it. And you can see back at that same pitching shot, you see that as the camera pitches up, the exposure stays the same and the ground stays at the right exposure whilst the sky gets overexposed, which in this case is exactly what we want as it's the ground that we're interested in. So that is your quick workaround for exposure lock. I know there's a little bit more involved, but you will quickly get used to what the settings do and it is actually doing you a, uh, a big favor by allowing you to control the ISO and just adjust the shutter speed. And finally, we've got the group of settings on the left. The white balance works exactly the same as in stills mode, adjusting the sensor's sensitivity to cool or warm light. Then you've got the resolution and frame rate. Now with the Air 2S, you have got a fair few options on both. And I personally am still in the 4K or 2.7K camp for resolution. And in probably what's a hangover from uh, European PAL TV systems, I, uh, we still shoot in 25 frames per second. But look, these days, most screens and displays can handle all the resolutions and frame rates that you can throw at it, to be honest. So it often comes down to what your computer can handle resolution-wise and what your preference is for, for frame rate. Now, below this storage options, you have got the color profile and encoding options. Now, to be honest, uh, these could fit uh, another full video altogether, so I will be very brief. But in a nutshell, uh, D-Log is a flatter color profile that lets you bring far more information out in post-production uh, and editing. The downside is that you have to edit it every single time, and in most cases, normal profile is more than good enough to, to give you what you want. HLG is an interesting profile that tries to record a higher dynamic range or HDR and that can be played back without having to do all the editing that D-Log requires. And likewise, the coding format, the two, uh, 264 versus 265, uh, this is the format. 264 is the format that most uh, computers and Macs will handle fine, whilst 265 uh, captures things in 10-bit color and gives you way more detail for editing in post-production, but again, it's far harder on your computer. So normally I find 264 is usually enough, but my suggestion is to experiment with these settings but uh, and play around with them, but don't be surprised if you find yourself trying to justify upgrading your PC or Mac in order to handle these, uh, these new uh, pretty chunky files. And then finally down the bottom you've got the mp4 or uh, .move, which is literally the format for, for encoding. Uh, to be honest, these days it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, generally, I think if you're running Windows, go for mp4, and if you're on a Mac, go for move. But look, there we go. That is the quick refresher course on what all these settings do, and I do think the new layout is a great improvement. Uh, far easier to adjust things, far easier to read, uh, so for me, Good move on DJI's part, I think. Anyway, look, I thought this would be a, uh, a quick video, but I'm guessing that may not be the case, but hopefully it's useful. For some of you, as ever, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found it useful, then give me a little thumbs up because it always helps the cause. And if nothing else, it is always good to see what the dogs were doing and getting up to whilst I was filming. Never work with animals? <sighs> boring, wouldn't it, really? Ted and Molly doing their uh, their thing is, is half the fun. But look, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, until next time, stay safe and sane, have fun, happy flying.